Soon both of our cars will be Teslas. My push mower, my weed whacker, even my chainsaw are all battery electric now. I just have one more ugly, noisy, polluting ice engine I can't get rid of yet. My riding mower. Help me, Muskilon. You're my only hope. Help me, Muskilon. You're my only hope. Help me, Muskilon. You're my only hope. Hey y'all, it's Dr. Know-It-All. I hope you enjoyed that intro. I spent way too much time on it. Also, this is a work in progress. My wife heard from you about uh, in comments on the channels that my background sucked, so she is working hard. This is just temporary. Just wait till the next video or two and it's gonna look super smashing. She's really good at that stuff. So let's talk here. I seriously hate my riding mower. It's loud, it pollutes, it's cranky as hell because gas engines hate sitting for long periods of time, like, you know, only once a week. And then in the winter, it could go four or five months without being used at all. And, and it just hates that, right? But I have over an acre to mow, so I'm kind of stuck with this ugly old beast of a Husqvarna, which you can see up there. I'll put a picture of it here. Yes, there are robot mowers that are out there, but they're pathetically stupid and require you to wire the entire edge of your yard, which is ridiculous. And they can't do fences. And yes, there are battery mowers now, but they're very expensive, they can't drive themselves, and they really aren't quite worth the upgrade cost. But what if we had a Tesla Model M for mower that is battery operated and uses a bit of Tesla's full self-driving smarts to learn to mow our yards for us and even do it attractively. Since it takes me about 45 minutes to mow my lawn, I've had a lot of time to consider what a Model M might be like. So here are some key points. Number one, battery operated, of course. Number two, removable battery for winter storage. That's important in us colder climate areas. Number three, it needs to be autonomous. Number four, it needs to use cameras and also sonar. Some other things I've thought about is it could use a lighter weight inference chip or an underclocked inference chip. It could use retrained full self-driving models that already exist. It could drive an electric motor with four wheels so it could turn you know, <laughs> essentially in place. It could have a direct drive electric motor for blades and it could possibly make use of a single motor version with a clutch for um, for individuals like me, but then a commercial version might have one motor directly for the blades and one for the actual wheels to make them move. It'd be super cool if it was self-leveling, if it had some kind of suspension for the wheels, but I don't think that's absolutely necessary. Again, maybe a commercial version versus a consumer version. And it needs to have at least a range of one acre on one charge, because number one, that's how big my yard is. But also number two, I think that's just a good ballpark for a consumer model. A lot of the battery operated ones are only like a third acre, which is ridiculous because they can't really mow the lawn all at once. And this is super critical for us people who live with large yards and have dogs. It needs to have a fence pass through as optional equipment that you can buy along with the mower. So I've considered both a riding and a totally level five autonomous vehicle. I decided a level five autonomy is the way to go because you save building the riding deck. You can make it very, very low and about 40 to 42 inch blades. And you can therefore save on size and weight. And you can also make it pretty stealthy. It can be, you know, fairly low to the ground in stealth mode. I'll discuss what it looks like in just a minute, but first of all, make sure if you enjoy the video, you like and subscribe for more of these. Also, a big shout out to my patrons on Patreon. You guys are really wonderful and you've been super helpful financially, of course, but also just helping me with a whole bunch of things. Special shout out to the new members today, Will Cooper, Sean Michael Egan, and Patrick Pence. And also a quick shout out to Zenly Music for his awesome music. Again, what he did for me was really silly, but he's a super talented musician. So definitely check out his page on YouTube or Instagram and show him some love. And finally, if you're in the market for a new Tesla, use our referral link below and both of us get a thousand supercharger miles, which is awesome. So what would a Tesla Model M look like? <laughs> okay, maybe not a Cybertruck, but actually <laughs> saying, thinking about that, that's what sparked my mind here. The design cues are definitely Cybertrucky. I would like to have a stainless steel exterior because it's impervious to the environment and it also doesn't require paint and you know paint gets scratched and you know how dirty riding mowers get if you've ever had to use a riding mower. So I thought about something a bit crab-like. I'm sure you saw it from the, f the thumbnail of this video, what it looks like already, but basically a flatter carapace, a pentagonal design, and it covers the drivetrain and is the deck onto which the blade and the motors and all that kind of stuff are mounted. Um, 
And so it's basically, like I said, a stretched out pentagon and the back trunk opens up to expose batteries, which can of course be removed as needed. And there's a charge port underneath it with three little contacts, like a, a positive, negative, and ground, so that it can back into the contact charge. So wherever it goes, it can just back in. And of course, a 120 volt charging is fine. So you could literally run an extension cord off your back deck to a little spot where the thing would plug in and it would just sit there. And it might have a little doghouse that it sat in to protect it from the elements while it was out there. I would assume it would use LFP or lithium iron phosphate batteries because they're much lower cost. And again, energy density is not super important with this. Also, since it's a very low design, it should be able to take on really steep hills, no problem. And I think, you know, something like a 20 kilowatt hour battery pack should be fine. I obviously would, <laughs> you'd have to actually build them and test them and see how it worked on relatively high grass as to how exactly big the battery pack was. But anyway, that, you know, that reduces the cost of the battery pack significantly between being LFP and being a really tiny battery. So it shouldn't cost that much to build the battery packs for this. So you're probably thinking, how in the world would this learn my yard? Well, what you would do first is you would have an app on your phone and you would have it follow you. You would walk the boundaries of your yard the first time. So basically you would show it, and then if it was smart, what it would do is it would ask questions. It would say like, I don't understand this part, or should I mow this part or not, or something, or should I avoid the driveway, whatever. So basically you train it, and its inference chip and some memory will learn what your yard looks like using full self-driving technology that has been taken from the cars, but retrained on lawns instead. And of course, ideally, you would even be able to tell it what sort of patterns to mow your lawn in, because I know that I particularly like doing it in like a crossways pattern so that you get something pretty looking. Our front yard is excessively large, and so therefore it's helpful to have something that looks nice as it's mowed. So a consumer version of this Model M might have enough memory to memorize like two or three areas or something like a front yard and a backyard and a side yard or whatever. But if you had the commercial version and of course paid for the commercial version, maybe it would have the memory to memorize like a hundred different yards. And so therefore what you could do is you could actually as a landscaper, you just fire this thing up for, you know, Joe Smith's yard and then you can do other work. So you're actually saving a ton of time. So I would think this would go over really, really big as a commercial thing because it would save a huge amount of time. If it took you an hour to mow the lawn and then another hour to do all the rest of the stuff, you basically save half of the time by having one of these. And of course, after training, the mower just goes where you, you tell it to, right? <laughs> so it uses four cameras is what I currently have if you look at my model of it. And I know they're kind of colored goofy, but that's so that they're super visible. But you have two on the front that are a little wider apart so it can see a good distance and then two on the back uh, on the outsides of the trunk and then a sonar in front and a sonar in back so that if it's backing up or going forward it always can detect like a cat or a dog or anything in its way and of course as this thing would run about walking speed so like six seven kilometers an hour it doesn't have to go fast you could run it as low as five frames per second, no problem, which means you could underclock a, a one, a single full self-driving inference chip, and you could underclock it so that it was just sipping on power. It wasn't using very much power at all, but it was plenty to do four cameras plus two sonars uh, at that low, low speed. And the fence pass through. So this is a necessary option for any autonomous mower and it's really frustrating that these don't exist yet. So basically what you want is just a box that's a little bit wider than the mower with a passive navigation element. So the inside of the fence, like where the dogs would be, would be open in a normal sense and the mower would drive into it. The contacts of the mower would drive over a, a set of mating contacts inside of the, the, the pass-through, and that would activate power on the pass-through, which would make the back door go down and a front door go up, and then it would drive out. The front door would remain open, until the mower came back again and contacted another set of contacts on the other side, which would cause the front door to go down and the back door to open up and it would drive back to its spot or vice versa. But basically you would just have one door always open, but the other door would be closed. And what you can do is essentially just cut a chunk of your chain link fence out and then attach the pass through to it. And you've got something that doesn't require any power because it's powered through the mower. And it's just a really, really simple thing so that it, it's, basically indestructible and it will allow you to have a yard with a fence, which honestly most large yards have because most people with big yards have dogs. So again, I think that having a fence pass through is critical, at least as an optional element. What about the price? Well, expensive mowers are at least $4,000 in the United States. 
with the simplicity of the design, the lower battery needs and low manufacturing costs, because again, you could build this in Giga Texas, it would just require a smaller, a thinner sheet of the stainless steel that you could bend into shape. And again, I'm, I'm thinking the carapace and then the understructure are all the same thing. So it's basically just goes ka-chunk and takes a big piece and then molds it into that shape. And then you punch holes in it where you need things like the blades to go in. You seal up the rest of it. You stick the battery pack on, which is also weather sealed. You close the back door, which is your service door if you need to have it. And the thing is pretty impervious at that point, right? So I'm thinking you could start relatively competitively at around $4,000 for a one motor model, or maybe up to like 5K or something like that. Um, and then what you do is you go up from there to like if you want a dual motor version, which is a you know heftier version with a bigger battery, or if you want a commercial version, you start to increase your costs you know, from there. So think about what this does. This leverages what Tesla already does well and shouldn't take all that long to build and train after Giga Texas and Cybertruck are online because it's more or less the same body. You're just using a smaller motor and you have the same types of batteries you're already building, et cetera. At four to $5,000, I would definitely buy one of these in a heartbeat. So what do you think? Is the market big enough for Tesla? Can it make enough of these? Can someone please give me a way to get rid of my internal combustion engine mower? Please, Elon, make it so. I hope you enjoyed this episode and found it, I don't know, <laughs> at least a little thought provoking. If you did, again, make sure you like and subscribe. The like is super important to YouTube for its algorithm so other people can find it. And if you're interested in asking questions, please do in the comments or especially at my email address, which is drknowitallknows at gmail.com. Till next time, bye-bye.